everyone welcome to my channel my name is Lade Olabi and today I'm starting a special special series with a special special someone today's the 3rd of December and five years ago today we got married um, without any further ado I want to specially welcome my husband <laughs> my one and only mosquito in my net I'm not a mosquito Tomato in my jollof rice. Mosquito gives by uh, malaria. <laughs> Cockroach in my cupboard. PJ, you're welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. It's been five years. <laughs> Guys, you're welcome. It's going to be an exciting journey for the next um, five... Five Fridays. Fridays. So, uh, to exactly today, um, five years ago, we got married. So, and it's been... A wonderful journey i think this um five series will be we'll be sharing with you uh some of the lessons we have learned along the way some of the mistakes some of the things we, we did that we're we're proud of um some of the things we like to do better so just stay back it's it's gonna bless you so much you're hey, welcome once again so today we're going to be going straight ahead to um, talking about five lessons we've learned in five years. Yes, it's been five years and, you know, of all the lessons, what five lessons can we talk about? So, I think I'm going first, right? Yeah, yeah, that's um, I want to start from the wedding. You know, I thought I was prepared for the wedding, but obviously, now that I think back in retrospect, there's a lot of things that I wish I did differently. Um, so yeah, the first one is the whole planning of the wedding. Um, I had a, I had a lie in my head, right? I told myself a lie and at different points in the planning, I knew that I was lying to myself, but I still chose to tell myself the lie. And because I was telling myself such a big lie, on the wedding day, I was so disappointed. Like I used to say it and as much as people say, don't say that. My wedding day is one of the saddest days of my life. People say, don't say, that's not a bad, that's a bad thing, don't say that. And it's not because it wasn't beautiful or because, I think the only thing I really like about my wedding is that I got married to the right person. That's all. Um, people who came for our wedding thought that it was beautiful or whatever, but it wasn't anything like I imagined, right? And I wish I'd known earlier that, you know what, this wedding is for your parents, so just leave it for them. I wish somebody told me earlier. So that's the planning, um, the reception. Yeah. If I know now what I did not know then, I would say that we should um, just give out takeaway packs at the church when they're done joining us, and we should give people food, and everybody should go to their house. You see that whole reception thing? If I have to do it again, I won't do it. And I just think it's a big waste of time that people spend so much time, energy, money, resources on planning reception. So yeah, that's another lesson on the wedding. And then lastly, which I think we'll be talking about in another video. Do you want to say something about the wedding? Yeah, I think um, I think it's because of the, the expectations that we do have um, during the, the, planning. the planning. And I think, um, I'm not sure if it's like that for everybody, but I, I know for most people, um, the old the old energy that was used to plan the wedding, the one day event, I think is too much. Um, like it's, um, it's, it just looked like a dream. Like that day just, it just like passed. passes away. Mm, yeah. Like it's, it's just, it's just so fast. And I think because you are the one inside the suit or inside the gown, yes, yes. you know, you are, everything is just like a mirage. Everything just yeah. happened like, like a mirage. You're not really seeing anything. Mm. You're not really seeing the people. You're not, if not for pictures, you would not be able to even say, oh, these are the people that came for the wedding. So I think um, the whole idea of the expectation is they are, many times they are, they are high. But when you are the one uh, in the shoe, it's, it's a different experience. I think for me, one of the issues was pressure. Like Instagram did a bad thing to me. And it was during around that my wedding time that um, we, I had just gotten involved with Instagram. I know Instagram was, you know, around for a while before our wedding, but then I started seeing Bella and I, ja, hmm, please, you guys should be careful. I started having expectations and I was doing everything in my power to make sure, and some of the things could have been so. And I think a big part of the problem is that I was not around for the planning 
so i was i was living in la la land like i was basically dreaming a lot of things i'll tell my mom oh this is what it is i came back home and i just saw something totally different the lace for instance that i wore for the engagement i never saw it until i came and i did not like it i i did not like it so i think another thing is me not being around it, it made a big difference and then also me having a different expectation so me i'm um, the instagram generation and my mom is she has nothing to do with that so sometimes when i'm saying talking about one vendor or the other where i was able to have my way was the introduction like the introduction was i i preferred my introduction because it was just simple and it was the fabric i wanted that i approved of the things i approved of but the wedding everything was a surprise everything was a surprise to me i was just shocked i'm like okay is this my wedding or um another thing so yeah that's a lesson that i've learned um particularly about the wedding so yeah um, and i think maybe another lesson about that still that still with that same point is the fact that the i mean the resources that were you know spent on the on the wedding uh, after the wedding i think we felt like they would have been they were, it was just better a waste. put to yeah, be better to something use, else. you know to something else all right so i think we should go to the second um lesson um well i think the second lesson um we've learned in five years is um um the concept of sacrifice uh, marriage is about sacrifice and um making a lot of sacrifices um, from your part and from the part of the spouse um, you know because at times when we I think I really want to thank God for my my, my wife and myself because I think we have some kind of mutual understanding about sacrifice because um, many people today the expectation is it will give me it will give me it will give me it will give me they are always expecting something towards them so but um if it's one way uh it's going to be very very um difficult but most times i don't think we we will ever adequately prepare for the kind of sacrifices Sacrifice. that marriage will bring so you will have to in at one point in time you know come to know that oh it's more than what i expect or what i imagine so um maybe like i said with the couple sacrificing maybe me sacrificing for her, her sacrificing for for myself um not going out the when you want um <laughs> Babe, not staying point, did you bring up that point after five minutes am i holding you down no 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 uh you, you don't need to hold me down but uh, i just need to just know. you just know that you can uh, you get so um i think um also maybe for when the, you know the children will come into uh, for instance, when we had our daughter, uh, she had to be away for like a year, almost a year. Uh, for me, it's a sacrifice. For her too, it's a sacrifice. But for me, she's not here. For her, I'm not there. So, and you know, at times what matters a lot to us, you can't, you can't get it done. Like for instance, she really loved that, oh, I'll be there. Even though I really don't think I will be, I mean, I will be in the... <laughs> Because I can't stand blood, so I don't even know if I will be able to. But I think the hospital is different over there, so things are not and like. No, they have provisions for the fathers. Like if you feed, they'll wake you. I will even feed. I will have gone out before I feed. <laughs> <laughs> so the lesson is that you are going to make sacrifices. You are going to do things you don't like to do. Beyond what you things, can anticipate. Yes, before you yes, get married. yes. So um, the third point, um, or the third lesson, I will say we have both learned is um, that in marriage. Patience is more important than love. Please, can we just use long suffering? Because long suffering is the senior brother of patience. Patience, you have, when your patience has maxed out. Yeah, you, you can use patience and you can use long suffering. Oh. Long suffering. And if you want to even um, now make it good, you can use perseverance. Oh, or, yeah. you know, either of the two. But the, the thing is that um, most times you think that love is that thing in marriage that doesn't leave. But there will be times when that love is not there. Yeah. In fact, there will be times where you feel like it has taken over, yeah. where you don't even want to see the face of your partner, maybe because he did something or, you know. And, you know, at times, um, you know, a point just came to my mind, I, I think I just say it. There are times that your expectation, you expect your spouse to do things you don't tell them to do. And at times, some of those things are the things that even, um, that makes you mad. 
like you were expecting that he will maybe say something to you that you yeah, didn't let me tell give an them. Let me give this patient's thing. And I think um, now that I think about it in retrospect, I like and appreciate how you were patient with me. So at first, I was not close to PJ's mom. I would never call. And that's something that you don't say do, but you expect me to do, right? Mm. And it gets really annoying. Is that one of the instances where you had to be patient with me? Yeah, I, I, th I believe that there are a lot of instances. Also, I might say, um, one of those instances, um, like the issue of prayer. <laughs> I, I, I think that, that, that one even got me madder, if I would put it like <laughs> that way. So, for instance, when we want to pray together, we will have said, we want to pray this time. Oh. So, as at that time, oh she will not be ready. And by the time we even pray <laughs> five minutes, she's either sleeping or do, <laughs> that usually gets, you know, used to, you know, make me angry. But I, I, most times I don't, I'll just, I'll just, why are you, we are going to even pray for I, no, one no, hour. No, 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 so, but I'm... Um, that time I was pregnant with Zoe. No, 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 not when you were pregnant. I mean when we first got married. I, we got, I got pregnant like the second day. No. No, no, no. You got pregnant the second around... Week. Third week. No. You I got, saw that. I, mm. You got pregnant like two, three months after. Yes, now. Zoe was born in... in, in uh, November. In November. So how many months was that? Well, then I was about to be pregnant. To that, be was, that was... Like that was... <laughs> I, I, I shall know that. Every like it's not as if I didn't want to, and most times I prayed you were at work. You knew that I used to go to work twelve midnight. So you need to know that in marriage you need uh, more of patience, perseverance, uh, more than you need, love. you know, love. Mm -hmm. And um, it will be. I think it's one of those things that your marriage needs to succeed more than love because there will be times where like i was saying that you the love won't be there you won't feel the love. it's there but you won't it will it will it will not be a feeling you won't even have feelings for uh, that person at all but when once you are patient enough you you fall you still fall back you know in love with your spouse so we need patience more than um, love in marriage all right so moving on to the next point um and the next point, guys, there's a bit of drama. And I'm aware my in laws, some of my in laws will be watching this video. And it'll be a shocker to them. But that's just my reality. And it's been five years. And I must share, I'm honest, you know. Well, so one of the lessons I learned over five years is that my in laws are not my enemies. Um, I knew this before I got married. I'd listened to a lot of messages, read a lot of books. I know that we are different people, we have different backgrounds, and all of that. But something happened the night before my wedding that drew the line of enmity and made me um, made, made my heart hurt my heart or hardened my heart against my in-laws and what was it um the friday before my wedding pj's older sister had gotten married and pj was not away yes is that not a shocker <laughs> um pj's family is very different in dynamics and Till tomorrow, I'm still not going to understand, and I don't think I'm interested in understanding. I just need to um, understand them with that dynamics and that difference. My family is very different, I guess, because we're not as many children. We're close knit. Like if, some, if something happens, something exciting, something interesting, we share it to everybody. Like um, my child just started walking, I post it on the family chat. Oh, her first tooth just came out. Oh. I got my job, I got my first job, or I got another job, or I left my job, or I got a new car, or I'm traveling abroad. But PJ's family, it will just happen, then later, later, you'll be hearing about it. Um, the marriage one, um, it apparently was a court wedding, and I'd, I think I saw a picture or something, and I was just like, is this actually happening? So all his siblings were not present at that wedding, and this is sister, it's his oldest sister like his mom literally like his older sister his mom was there his dad was there the older mm, brother no, was no, there no. but they were aware they were in your brother's house so they were practically there because your brother was there they were aware okay so it just happened that um this thing happened and i think one thing i learned afterwards which was like a year more than a year after was that um 
they didn't necessarily tell us because they didn't want to bother us it was from a good place but i didn't see it like that i didn't want to hear anything i just kept i was just like i was hurt i'm like wow really are we bad people that we should not know about it or are we going to do something bad about it or like i just wasn't it really hurt me and um i used it for a long time i used it to judge even pj's mom because i just felt like an outsider because that's a family thing and if they don't I, i felt like i was an outsider my husband was an outsider and these people who are supposed to be your family are not really your family so the first year of our marriage the first few months i had an impression that these people are not who, who you think they are um, but after a while i got to know that they are really really amazing people and they actually live from a place of love um it's, it's a different type of love for me it's a different type of love but then yeah so now in pj's family somebody can relocate outside the country travel and you will not know when the person is gone you just hear that ah this person is gone and the normal thing um pj doesn't know how many nieces and nephews he has i even know them more than he does um it's just not a thing um i don't know all their birthdays but i try to know their birthdays i mean for me that's just my idea of my of family and it was really different so yes after a while i got to know that these people are not my enemies they actually love me um that same sister in law of mine who's like pj's mom um now looks out for me so well like she checks on me and i think i'm closer to some of them more than pj is you say so <laughs> i think i am because there's some basic things that you don't know I, I, I that you ask me we, I, we i think uh, i think for us you are not um for instance we we, we grew di- differently yeah, and i think I me in particular i think me in particular like number one, i'm far from them in age the last child i'm the last child far. i'm far of them in uh, from them in age that's one secondly i think most of them are closer to each other than to me like peter is just like one outcast like no not not i, I, I wouldn't use that word and, and i think this is one of the reasons they're just in your own bubble ministry the, the, no ministry also i didn't live with them with them you know um when everybody was still at home and everybody has not people have not gone to school gone to so by the time i was born some of them are already teenagers already yeah so and i didn't it even stay in the young. house yeah. as the age of i think five or six already i've i've left the house living somewhere so, like, there was nothing in common. so we, we didn't really stay together like that so most times and you know some of them too most times they um you know but i think majorly that's the reason and uh, i think the clo- the the person i'm even closest to will be the person you mentioned at yemi because at yemi is like my like my little she's, mom yeah she's like she's like she she looks out for me right she's from not little mom. She's, she's, <laughs> and she could really be your mom because pj's parents had him at a very old age so yeah she could like i feel like pj's mom is like my grandma when yeah, she, when, she, when, she, your, when, when your dad was alive i feel like you know so it was just kind of off, but now um, I think, I, it took a long time though, and I, I I thought it would never be fixed. Like I just always saw them as. Mm, mm. So I think I think the lesson is that there are, there are things we do differently from yes. our families, and we need to understand that, not to use that to use judge, your own interpretation uh, to, to judge. judge life. But guys, I but use for, this to term, me, it's, man. To me, is that that's nothing. Like maybe my brother is traveling, he didn't tell me. Ah. It's absolutely Outside normal. Why should you tell me? <laughs> like me, I'll, I'll I'll be doing FaceTime with them. Even when, me when are I you bothered? Are you on the plane uh, now? So uh, even when I traveled, I think it was just maybe my my sister or my mom I told. No, it's not so, as if you are telling them for like. I know, I know. Hey, it's not it's like you are taking. About, it's not spirit. just. It's not just. Okay, everybody is just like. They are too uh, much. So the last point, um, and this one we're going to be real quick because we spent a lot of time on this video already. The last lesson that we've learned in this course of our marriage um, for five years is that when it comes to ministry, if you're a couple that you're in ministry, ministry is really all or nothing. Especially when you are called to start a new work. There is no such thing as starting a new work and doing ministry part-time. It took me a while to understand it because at some point in our lives, um we were broke really broke don't worry there's a whole episode about money and when pj would say I, i'll get frustrated and i'll be like so what do you want to do actually in your life like which business do you want to start like what do you want to go and which what do you want to do you want to go and get a job what do you want to do 
And he'll say, I'm working. I'm doing ministry. And I didn't understand it. For a really long time, I didn't understand it. But, and I guess because that's I was in need as well. And it was just a very bad time. But guys, now I know that ministry is all or nothing. You can't do ministry. Like, you can't be in full-time ministry starting a work, like founding a work from scratch. And you are juggling it with something that also needs your attention. So one thing will suffer. So yeah, that was a lesson I learned. Um, maybe in like our third year. I think around our third year was when I learned that lesson. Yeah. Okay, so if um, you're a couple in ministry, you need to understand that um, it will affect your own. Ministry will affect your own. And um, the thing is that you have to sacrifice some part of your comfort um, for the ministry. Uh, Almost you cannot all be, your comfort. Yeah, all your comfort. Like, it's going to affect your marriage. And I, I think it will only affect it negatively when uh, one party doesn't understand the sacrifice yes. of, of marriage. Because just like, oh, of no. Ministry. like Of ministry, sorry. You're just like, no, I can't take this. Or I can't, no, no, no. It will take your time. Ah. You won't be able to be together the, when you want to be together. I mean, it's a lot about um, sacrifice. So if you're a couple in ministry, whether I, even if, if it's part-time or full time just know that it's going to affect some part of your marriage and it's okay when both of you understand all right i think i think we're done yeah this that. is all so these are five lessons we've learned in five years um i hope you're enjoying this if yeah. you're enjoying it please let us know in the comments um follow us on social media pj's social media handle will be on the screen mine as well um and you can send us messages dms email whatever reach out to us if you want if you have questions you want to ask us and share this video with your friends and your yeah, family there's so always blessed. something to learn um and yeah if there's anything that you if you're married and you want to share some lessons you can also let us know in the comments okay, but, yeah. let's continue the conversation <laughs> thank you so much for celebrating with us on this fifth year anniversary it's really 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 special and don't worry when we get to the last episode the last friday of the year we're going to be telling you what our projections are for the next five years you know power couple things yeah. big things things <laughs> all right so you want to end yeah, so thank you so much for joining us um, today and thank you for staying to the end. Um, like she said, please uh, like, leave your comments and also share this. There will be somebody that this video, you know, will help. So we want to pray for you. If you are single, we pray that you will find the right person. Amen. That will treat you like a queen or a king that you are. <laughs> and also, if you are married already, you're going through any problem, any trouble, we pray that the Lord will give you wisdom and understanding Amen. to navigate through them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray that your marriage will become uh, the better for best marriage Amen. in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill Amen. the vision and the purpose for your marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Bye.